today, I'd like to talk about building an emergency water storage area. During an emergency, it seems that most people are concerned about a food storage supply, but something more important than food is water. I'd like to show you how easy it is to store water. This seemingly normal deck is fully functional, yet it has a little secret. If the need should arise, it can store over 900 gallons of water. Let's take a look. The area underneath the deck is normally wasted space, but with a little bit of ingenuity, some hard work with a shovel, and some masonry and concrete skills, you can find you suddenly have a perfect little storage area. The walls are reinforced cinder block and concrete, covered with three layers of waterproof paint. And since this will only have water in it during an emergency, it has a removable staircase so you can exit and enter easily in order to store food and other supplies when you're not storing water. However, when you are storing water, install a calibrated gauge like this one. This way you always know how many gallons of water you currently have stored. Remove the deck and this is what the storage area actually looks like. In the second half of this video, I'll show you how I built it. This picture shows 200 gallons of water. I was doing a leak check as well as calibrating my water gauge. Now, if you have advanced warning you're going to need emergency water in the future, just fill it up with the garden hose. It's a very good idea to have some pre-cut plastic. Because when you're storing water, you want to prevent stuff from falling into it. And since it's pre-cut, you simply lay it out and put some weight on it, and you've protected your water. You do, however, want to keep enough materials on hand so that you can tie your storage area into the gutter system on your house. This way, if you lose your residential water, you still have backup water. Since you're probably going to be drinking this water in an emergency, put some advanced thought into what kind of moss treatments you put on your roof. Some of that stuff is not good for human consumption. Speaking of consuming water, you also want to have pre-built a gravity water treatment system. Unlike a lot of water treatment chemicals, this filter doesn't expire with age. It consists of two 5-gallon buckets, one on top of the other. The bottom bucket lid has a little hole in it. And a little nipple sticking out of the bottom of the top bucket goes into that hole. That nipple is attached to a ceramic filter. Fill the top bucket up with water. The water will slowly leak through the ceramic filter. And the filtered water will wind up in the bottom bucket. This is the spec sheet on that filter. Let's take a little closer look at it. It says the Saracisle Plus is manufactured to remove suspended solids, pathogenic bacteria, cysts, organic chemicals, and improve the taste and odor. The filter is silver impregnated to prevent bacteria growth and is self-sterilizing. Moving on, let's take a look at a couple other options for storing water. You could build an above-ground watershed like this. It consists of two 55-gallon barrels. Roof water fills the top barrel, overflow then goes into the bottom barrel. Then that overflow can go back into the storm drain. Or you can send the overflow into a koi pond you've built. When you start building ponds, now you're talking thousands of gallons of water. See the link above for my video on this rain barrel system. Looking for something a little simpler? Remember at the beginning of the video, I said when you're not storing water in here, you can store other stuff in here. Well, that stuff will be in 5-gallon buckets. And coincidentally, when your buckets are empty, they store very compactly. And the buckets themselves can be used to hold water. Here we're looking at 80 gallons of water storage that's portable. Let's take a look at what's involved in building one of these underground water storage areas. My preferred location for all my underground projects is underneath a deck. This is because the area underneath the deck is normally not used and is wasted space. I hate to see wasted space. The first thing you want to do, probably after removing the deck to make digging easier, is dig the area out. I personally find digging to be relaxing and carthetic, and gives me a much better workout than any gym would. If the location you've chosen to dig is next to your house, I don't see any problem digging along the foundation. You'll see many houses built with the actual foundation exposed like this. Just make absolutely sure you don't go below the footer. That's the wider stretch of concrete mounted below the foundation. Many bad things will happen if you dig past this point. Now, the dirt that you pulled out of your hole. Don't throw it away. This is valuable stuff. What you can do is build yourself a hand sifter. 
I have found that a quarter inch wire screen works well for this. And it's easy to operate. Simply fill the sifter up with dirt. Then shake it. The wood legs in the back of the sifter hold the majority of the weight while you're doing your shaking. The clean dirt falls down onto the ground, while all the rocks and debris that's bigger than a quarter inch will stay up in the sifter. Now that the rocks are separated from the dirt, I recommend not stopping here. Build yourself a second sifter with a larger screen in it. You can run your rock pile through the sifter and sort out the larger rocks from the smaller ones. And don't forget, in addition to getting nice piles of different sized rocks, you'll also have some nicely sifted dirt. One of the things we'll be using our sifted rock for is to build our water storage area. Other things the rocks can be used on is a dry well, proper drainage under each of your house faucets, as well as drainage, insect barrier, and plant barrier around the perimeter of your house. Your sifted gravel would be the bulk of the drainage. For that gravel, you want to install a layer of landscape fabric. Then finish it off with some decorative gravel. This sifted dirt as well has many uses, such as the foundation layer for a greenhouse. Well, that's enough digression. Let's head back over to our water storage. Here, I'm temporarily placing center blocks so I can get an idea where to put my footer. Before starting your concrete work, make sure you have lots of rebar on hand. The footer will be a solid pour of concrete, a minimum of 6 inches deep, and reinforced with rebar. So that your new footer doesn't sag, you want your rebar to actually enter into the footer of the house. The holes the rebar will go into can be easily drilled with a tool called a roto hammer. The roto hammer uses a special bit called an SD bit that handles concrete drilling with no problem. Let's take a look at an example of how you can easily drill through 4 inches of concrete. It actually is that easy. Okay, so we have the footer is poured, and you can see I have rebar coming out every place where there's going to be a hole for a cinder block. While mortaring your cinder block into place, there's an additional step you want to take. You want to use your roto hammer again and drill a hole in both the cinder block and the foundation of the house. Place rebar in these holes, effectively attaching the cinder block to the foundation of the house. Now, I ran into a problem because of the sidewalk. I didn't have enough clearance to run the center block straight out, so I had to get creative. Install the angled center block with mortar along the bottom and the inside edge. Ensure rebar is in the gaps between the center blocks. Build some temporary plywood formwork, then pour concrete into the gaps. This concrete will act like a keystone in an arch. It'll redirect inward pressure on the angled block over to the main wall. Remember all that gravel we sifted earlier? Well, this is where we want to use it. Line the dirt wall with landscape fabric, then put in a 6 to 8 inch barrier of gravel. This will help to keep water from resting against the outside of your wall. When you're finished, every hole in the center blocks will have rebar and concrete inside of them. Oh yeah, and like they say, safety first. Try to keep people from falling into this while you're working on it. Once the wall is complete, pour a concrete floor. Before you paint concrete, you need to treat it with muriatic acid. This is a diluted sulfuric acid concentration. It cleans and etches concrete to enable paint to properly stick to it. I use this basement and masonry waterproof paint applied between two and three coats. It's actually the same paint I use on my koi ponds. It works pretty well. Throw a couple hundred gallons of water into it for about a week to do a leak check on it. And if all works well, pull the water out and start building your deck. It really helps if you know how to weld. I had to make custom brackets to attach the deck to my house. Of course, during non-emergencies, when you're using this as storage, you want to build a staircase for easy access. The hardest part about building the stairway is figuring out what the appropriate angle for your stringers are. But once that's done, the rest of the job's pretty simple, just cutting 90 degree angles. And cutting each tread is simply two cuts with a chop saw. And don't forget, if you're using pressure treated lumber, you want to ensure the wood preservative stays in the wood by painting it. 
And the paint will also increase the visibility, making it easier and safer for you to enter and exit using the stairs. Well, that's about all I have for you today. I hope this video has given you ideas on how you can prepare in advance for the next catastrophe that may occur. However, even if you never have to store a drop of water in this thing, which we hope you don't have to, think of all the fun you had building it. It was worth it for entertainment value alone. Well, thanks for watching.